Fire Islands sees a pair of best friends set out to have a legendary week-long summer vacation with the help of Cheap Rosé and a group of eclectic friends. This was released on Hulu in June, it's written by Joel Kim Booster, who also stars as one of our leads, and it's directed by Andrew Ahn in his third feature film. I haven't seen his debut Spawn Night, but his second film, Driveways, was easily one of my favorite movies of 2020 for just how tender and emotional it felt while still being pretty small in scale. Now this is certainly the total opposite of small in scale, as it's a wilder, more energetic romantic comedy, and I was excited to see what Ahn would do with something on a bit of a larger scale. It's actually an adaptation of the classic Pride and Prejudice, which I haven't read, but I've seen a couple of the film adaptations. And I'd add this to the list of successful adaptations of this novel, as I had a good time with this. Now, despite having a lot of characters to follow, it's not exactly an overly ambitious movie, as it doesn't necessarily look to achieve anything on a hugely emotionally profound level. It's more of an easygoing hangout movie that was crafted as a celebration of the LGBTQ community, looking to just put a smile on your face, and I definitely think it'll be hard to resist as far as that goes. Now, while even at 105 minutes, the film can feel overstuffed given the number of characters who get their own storylines, but for the most part, I had a blast following them. Now, even at 105 minutes, the film can feel overstuffed given the number of characters who get their own storylines, but for the most part, I had a blast following all of them. The quick-witted banter among this group makes for many of the film's funniest moments, sometimes more just on an amusing level than laugh out loud, but it's at least pretty consistent. And the strong bond that they all share is one of the driving forces behind much of the film and why you just have so much fun following everyone around. I'm not all that familiar with Joel Kim Booster, but he is such a charismatic lead, while Bo and Yang was also a blast as his best friend. And Margaret Cho also appears as the house mother of this group, as she owns the house they all regularly stay at, and she was also another bright spot as this sort of mentor figure to them. Though honestly, while not all the cast gets completely utilized, as I mentioned there are maybe one too many storylines going on here, everyone's still a lot of fun with what they get to do. Like I said, it's not overly ambitious, but as I've said in previous reviews, not every movie necessarily needs to have the grandest of stakes in order to be a good time, as long as the heart and emotion is there, it can still work, and that's the case with this, as there's the sincerity to it that I feel will ultimately be hard to resist. And in the end, it makes Fire Island an enjoyable enough time. While a bit overstuffed in storylines and it can sometimes feel just more amusing than laugh out loud hilarious, this is still an enjoyable romantic comedy and a heartfelt loving celebration of the LGBTQ community that's bound to put a smile on your face. Fire Island gets a 7 out of 10. So let me know, did you see Fire Island or are you planning to see it and what were your thoughts? Is this your favorite adaptation of Pride and Prejudice? Is this your favorite Andrew Ahn movie? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it. And for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone and keep having fun with film.